today, December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked. World War II created a time of despair, leading to what some would call a turning point to end the housewife stereotype. 14,000 ships, 88,000 tanks, 300,000 planes, and 350,000 women who started the revolution. For many women, World War II brought not only sacrifices, but also new jobs, new skills, and new opportunities. Born in 1923, Naomi Parker Fraley was the face behind the icon Rosie the Riveter, as well as the face behind all industrious women in the workforce. Rosie the Riveter is one of the most well-known uses of propaganda during World War II. As the men were sent off to fight for our country's safety, the women were at home doing the same thing. Our country was dry of money and workers, so they turned to the women to save the day. The women at the time were stay-at-home mothers and had no experience of what was being asked of them. The women needed an extra shove to get them out of their homes and into the factories. Rosa the Riveter was created to do just that, but she showed that working could be formidable, glamorous, and most of all, necessary. Women kept the country running by filling traditionally male jobs. You may think that the We Can Do It iconic poster is Rosie's only legacy, but before Naomi Parker Fraley's face is shown on millions of posters, Rosie Riveter was created in a distinguished song. We had the honor of interviewing Mr. James J. Kimball. He is a professor at Seton Hall University and a researcher for propaganda on the U.S. home front, especially during World War II. What those people during the war would have known uh, was a song that was pretty popular at the time and also Norman Rockwell's version of Rosie the Riveter. Um, but since the war years, the song has pretty much disappeared. Very few people know about it. And Norman Rockwell's Rosie is copyright protected, and so you just don't see it that much. And the one that's become famous is the Westinghouse poster. that was The Rosie the Riveter song by Red Evans and John Jacob Leo started the legacy of working women, followed by the posters and other Rosies. Here is a short part of the chorus. All the day long, where the rain or shine, she's a part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory. Rosie, the riveter. The idea of Rosie's image was captured from the song to paper by the artist Norman Rockwell. Norman based his Rosie the Riveter off of this picture of Naomi Parker Fraley taken in the Almeida Naval Air Station for a newspaper article. In this picture, Naomi is wearing her unforgettable red bandana because the women were recommended to keep their hair out of the way. This was to help prevent it from getting tangled in the machine. Naomi worked for the Almeida Naval Air Station welding metal for airplanes that would later be assembled. This is a very similar job description to what Marion Wine gave us when we interviewed her via mail. Marion worked on Kaiser Shipyard in Richmond, California in 1944 on number 3 out of 7 major shipbuilding yards. The Kaiser yards were ranked 20 on the U.S. corporations in the value of wartime production contracts. This is a quote from the letter we received from Marion Wine. Not until people started talking about honoring the women who worked in World War II did we start talking about even working in the shipyards. This demonstrates perfectly how propaganda influenced people that working was an astonishing and courageous action. Marion shares with us, I am proud to be a Rosie, especially when the veterans say they had won the battle but didn't have a way to get home, and here would come a ship from Richmond. Rosie motivated Marion to build those ships that carried veterans to their loved ones. For the duration of the war, the female labor force grew by 6.5 million. By 1945, nearly one out of every four married women worked outside the home. Rosie the Riveter even had an influence on domestic servants, demonstrated by, in 1940 to 1944, the percentage of women workers employed as domestic servants declined from 17.7% to 9.5%. This propaganda pushed the American citizens through the war effort. 
America's secret weapon was the woman who voluntarily mobilized to meet every challenge. Mr. Kimball pointed out to us that it's not the rights of the woman that change, it's how we as citizens perceive and act upon them that was affected during the war. And to have this ideal version of your girlfriend or your woman or, you know, even your mother um, working in a factory probably was a real surprise and a shock for them. And I'm sure that many of them were not very happy to see that. After we won the war, the soldiers came back to a whole new world being run by women. The women did not surrender their new working lives back to the men without a fight. Maureen Honey states in her book, they fully expected that new workers would be drawn from homes in which wives did not need to work and therefore would leave the labor market at the war's end. Between 1943 and 1945, polls indicated that a shocking 61 to 85 percent of women and workers wished to keep their jobs after the war ended and they were no longer necessary. Mr. Kimball inferred, uh, After the war, uh, there was a lot of pressure for women who had gone into the factories from the war period to go back home to uh, uh, become homemakers again or to at least not be in the factory. And so I'm sure that for many of them, that was frustrating and they probably felt like their rights were being uh, infringed upon at that point. Naomi Parker Fraley has always been the face of Rosie, whether her and the rest of the world realized it or not. When the poster first became known, a woman named Geraldine Hoff Doily claimed Rosie as her own. She said that the photograph was taken of her when she worked in Ann Arbor, Michigan around March 1942. The world believed her misconceived thought because the poster is simply a painting of a woman. It could be misidentified as anyone at the time due to the amount of workers in uniforms and the fact that it's a cartoon-like painting. Naomi and her sister, Ada Wine, found themselves at the Riveter National Park in Richmond for a gathering of the Rosies. Soon the two became face to face with the truth. Naomi was in fact Rosie the Riveter. Looking back, Naomi recalls a photo being taken of her while she was hard at work. Although she never gave the photo second thought because it was just for a small Milwaukee newspaper. Little did she know this photo inspired the world-renowned poster. I just wanted my own identity. I didn't want fame or fortune, but I did want my own identity. Naomi stated in an interview for the October 25th People magazine that When I saw the poster, I did think it looked like me, but nobody had ever mentioned it. With extensive research, Rosie's family and some helpful friends discovered that the empowering propaganda was based off a photograph taken at Almeida Naval Air Station in 1942 for the Milwaukee Journal. Naomi and her sister gathered evidence and mailed a letter to the National Park Service. With their response, the park restored Rosie the Riveter's true identity to Naomi Parker Fraley. The women of this country these days need some icons. If they think I'm one, I'm happy about that. During World War II, Rosie took a stand for women in the workforce and continues standing strong today. Rosie's message went from helping American women to work to now being used in every country, for every race, and every critical issue. Mr. Kimball interprets Rosie's poster as... Um, really seems to our modern eyes to be very empowering. And I think that a lot of young women see it. You know, they post it on their, uh, their bedroom walls. They put it in their dorm rooms. Uh, you see it on their web pages. Uh, it clearly is very empowering today. For example, Rosie was recently shown wearing a pink cat hat and marching along with the women protesters in Washington, D.C., along with the 673 other official sister marches. Rosie also takes a stand for girls' education rights as Malala Yousafzai takes on the role as Rosie the Riveter. Rosie the Riveter was and still is a powerful and inspirational icon for all women across the world.